Hey YouTube Land, Tech Conjurers there doing another action figure review and today we're having a look at one of three from wave two of the Defenders of the Earth action figure line from NECA. Now these are based on the animated on the animation models but they are also a kind of homage to the original figure line. And so back in the 90s um just a bit of a brief history back in the 90s they tried to reinvent flash gordon so i have done reviews for the first wave of figures which was ming the merciless flash and the phantom uh the wave two figures which i will showcase on the back of the box here consist of mandrake the magician lothar and this character garax so the only figure I had when I was growing up uh, was from this line was the Garax figure. There was a cool line of figures, and I think it was done by Galoob, because the, the uh, NECA logo is done to represent the company that did do it originally. I think it was Galoob did it originally. I could be wrong. I'm not sure. But Garax was the one figure I had from that line. I always wanted the Ming the Merciless, and I always wanted his... Was it Mon? Was it Mondor? Whatever. There was like a big weird serpent dragon thing that he would ride on. Uh, where Flash Gordon came with a fighter, or it didn't come, but it, there was an there was a fighter jet thing for Flash Gordon, for, or his vehicle. I don't remember there being too many vehicles in the line. There was something for the Phantom. I think there was the skull copter for the Phantom. There was the skull copter for the Phantom. And there was a starfighter thing for Flash. Mandrake and Lothar didn't really get anything. In fact, I don't even remember there being... Oh, there was a Lothar figure. I'm not sure if Mandrake got, got a figure. But I do know that Ming and Garrix did have a figure. And I had the Garrix figure. Now, it is quite different from what this one is. But they have done a homage to that original figure the sculpt is pretty much the same it's just they did a difference on the actual paint echo so the original artwork on the cover of the box is pretty cool you can see he's supposed to be some sort of there were supposed to be ice warriors more crystalline than robotic but he is a robot so the brief right up on the back is Garax, ultimate evil robot, programmed with, a, with the wicked hand of Ming Garax, the most villainous robot in the galaxy, evil leader of the Ice Robot Army. He alone has the capacity to alter and adapt strategy in the endless battle of heroes versus villains. So it does has a call out for all the people that uh, worked on this line. And then it has the Defenders of the Earth logo on the side. You have an image of a figure, and then it is number six in the wave. So one to three, as I said, number one, two, and three is Ming, Flash, and Phantom. And then four, five, six is Lothar, Mandrake, and Garax. So Garax is actually kind of cool. Um, he does have some cool accessories. He has pretty much the similar accessories from everyone across the board, with one exception. So this is that little critter figure that came with Phantom. I can't remember the name of it. I think it's called Snuffles or Snuggles or something along those lines. I can't remember the name of the character. But uh, he comes with this additional neck piece that clips onto the back of the neck. If I just move the tail out of the way. It's designed to clip into the back of the head behind the neck. And it's designed so that characters can hold the figure. Let me see if I can get the gripping hand or a gripping hand. Something along those lines. I think it's more for the human characters. But it's just something so he can hold it. It gives them something to grip onto to hold them in their hand. So there is that. He does come with interchangeable hands. So he comes with, if I, if I take his gun hand off. He comes with two kind of closed fist hands. So he has one kind of punching. And then he has this one, which isn't exactly... It's like a trigger finger hand, but it's not pure trigger finger. It is 
designed for uh, it's not quite a punching hand it's not quite a uh, trigger finger he ha does have a dedicated trigger finger hand which is this one which is designed for a smaller pistol which I, if I get that you can have him hold it with that and have the trigger on it he does have that other grip hand which also will hold the barrel of the pistol depending which way you want it you can either have him with the hand on the trigger or without he has two of these grasping hands uh so this one as i said is either a trigger finger hand or it's a pointing hand whichever way you want to des describe it and then he has kind of closed punch hands all his weapons come with blast effects so he is unique in the sense that he does come with the standard blaster or at least a version of the kind of standard blaster that everyone else comes with. It's actually modified for his one. And he comes with his arm cannon. This was basically what the vintage action figure came with, except it was in red, not in this kind of um, kind of metallic blue, which is a really nice color. And this actually pegs together. So it gives you a tri blast effect. So you can take the blast effects that come with now he doesn't have a blast effect that goes over this for the single blast so you do have a single blast for the blaster on its own on on its own but you do have a blast effect for this for the long range firing mechanism so you have two so you have one that pegs into the front of the big gun and then one that pegs into the front of the smaller gun so you can actually have him firing make it look like he's firing both barrels at the same time which is kind of nice his gun doesn't really have anything to hold on to or his gun arm doesn't really have anything to hold on to your best bet is taking right pop his hand out I just pop out on the peg so it's best to take his kind of punchy hand for this and then you just slide over it and it basically just slides in place over the hand um it doesn't seem it, it, i don't think it's designed to go in any specific way but it does slide in over the hand and then if you want him to have the other gun in his off hand or can he actually have both hands actually i don't think no he can only really wield the if you put this onto this hand and then give him the one of the kind of trigger finger hands depending which one you want to go with I kind of like this one so you can have him dual wielding with two guns you can give him the one with the the finger over the kind of guard piece but this kind of looks pretty good as is and again you can still use the blast effect on this so you want him firing with both barrels at different targets you can do that so he's pretty nifty uh, what he can do so i'm just gonna take off his gear and i'm gonna bring in the tape measure so you can see how tall he is just get him to stand so he should be in around the seven inches scale which he is he's a little just a little shy over seven inches to the top of his noggin so he is pretty cool he is quite articulated so he does have an ab crunch on the original toy um and they have uh, they have done a kind of i think it was a san diego exclusive or it was a exclusive version of this guy could have been a it's definitely a neck exclusive as a homage to the or homage to the original figure I'm trying to think if it was that part of that target sale thing that they do. But um, so basically on the original figure, his face was all red. So most of these paint apps were like red, kind of a darker wine colored red as opposed to this bright red. There was an image of Ming in his chest plate, which is where this kind of thing comes in into play. But other than that, he was like pretty much all kind of clear grayish off white color. From what I remember of the original toy, he didn't have any of this blue kind of icing effect or to make it look like he's an ice robot. But he has some great articulation. 
so his arms can go out that much can rotate all the way around he has a bicep swivel his double jointed elbows so you can get a bend about that much not fully like up to his head but you can almost it is over 90 degree bend he has a swivel in the wrist and then depending on which hand he has in he has a hinge on that wrist he has raised articulation his head is on a ball joint so you get some good range of movement you can actually do a 360 with it if you want to you get some up and down which is quite nice his legs can splay out that much he is a bit hindered by his waist piece he can kick forward that much not too much he does have the thigh swivel which is hidden by this you know diaper crotch plate piece whatever you want to call it he does have dual jointed knees which are quite tight on mine so he does have the dual jointed knees so he can kick all the way back up he does have the rocker ankles he does have forward and back on the ankle he does have pick holes and he actually has if I bend it i don't want to over stretch it or over force it but he does have that mid toe articulation thing that some figures have i'm not sure if the um the other figures in that in this line have that i think they just have the standard boot but he does have some great paint applications and he does look pretty nifty now I won't bring any of the others in for comparison because what I'm going to do over the course of next, hopefully next couple of days or so, is um, record videos for, or upload videos of the other two characters in Wave 2 and then do a showcase of them all together so you can see the heights of them all together. But just for a scale comparison with something else that's supposed to be sort of in a 7 inch line, we'll bring in one of McFarlane's Space Marines. For the look, we'll bring in a, another McFarlane figure, which is the Ben Affleck Batman from Justice League. We'll bring in a Predator from NECA. So you can see just how he scales up to figures, other figures from other lines. I'm just going to adjust my camera there slightly, just ever so slightly, so it's up a bit. But overall, you can see he's pretty nice lead on figure. He's compared to the other um, Defenders of the Earth figures, he doesn't reuse the same body buck. Nearly everyone else in the Defenders line uses the same base body and then they just added stuff to it. This guy's more unique. He actually has a full actual body or fully sculpted retooled or not retooled but fully sculpted body. So he is different in that respect. So overall, he's a pretty cool figure. Um, I do recommend picking him up if you can get a chance, and if you can get a chance get to get the exclusive one, I would go for would go for it. Um, I'm trying to get one myself if I can find one. But well, I think they were sold out in most places, so it's just maybe you might look at, get lucky and manage to pick one up. So there you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video review for Garax, the evil robot from Defenders of the Earth. And as always, please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe to my videos. Cheers.